There's some incredibly positive things going on in the market if we just know where to look. And really what it comes down to is looking at the data behind the data. And today is Thursday, and every Thursday we do a nice little show called NFA Live, and that's where it's uh, me, uh, Ben from Into the Cryptoverse, and uh, Guy from Coin Bureau. And we just sit around and we just uh, bounce off some ideas and ask some questions, and the link is in the description. You can check it out. And there's Guy uh, running the show. is on his channel today. There's me looking off, and then there's Ben uh, checking out uh, Bitcoin dominance shenanigans in the uh, comment section. And when we were here, I got to tell you, like today's show was a little bit negative because we were talking a little bit about politics, what's going on as far as the, the narrative and who might actually make it. And is that actually good for Bitcoin and crypto? Then we took a look at what's going on uh, macro wise and also globally. And unfortunately, we got into talk about a little bit of wars and we started talking about this thing called the fourth turning. Uh, you can check that out. And I got to tell you, it's not the most positive video we put out, but it is timely and it does anchor you into a little bit of, of reality of what actually is going on. But that's the sentiment. And I don't have to tell you what it is because you can feel it. You know exactly what it is. You know it's boring. You know right now this is, this is just uh, the way that the market is. And even if we take a look at the fear and greed index, I mean, we've been neutral. I mean, a little bit of greed mix in there from, from March or so when there's a little bit of a price increase, but we've been neutral forever, it seems like, and it's kind of moving sideways. Neutral, 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 neutral. However, that's the sentiment. But if we take a look at what's going on behind the scenes, this is when everything happens. This is when, this is where I made all my money in the last cycle is when it was boring and no one wanted to be around. And I didn't really realize what was going on behind the scenes because I didn't really pay that much attention. I just thought, well, if I just dollar cost average, things will work out. I think it's going to do pretty well, but now I've got this nice little channel. I can show you the things that are happening. This was a article by forecast. Bitcoin mining difficulty rises 3.4%, all-time high hash rate. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's true. So we take a look. There's a great a website. It's called Look Into Bitcoin. It's 100% free. Links in the description. High quality charts. Can't recommend them enough. And we take a look at the hash rate. We can see that, my God, it's uh, actually quite high. And if we zoom in and take a real gander at this, and we can see that, yes, uh, the hash rate is at an all-time high. What does that mean? That means that with all the neutrality and everything that's going sideways, we've got some very large Bitcoin mining operations saying, you know what, we may be cutting it even. We may be a little profitable, maybe under profitable. Who knows what, you know, where they are, depending on the price they, they, they get for the electricity, where they're located, and so on and so forth. But the hash rate is when they have to turn on all, all those Bitcoin miners, all that computational powder, power, and it goes to the roof because they are all competing for the same thing every 10 minutes to mine that, buy, that Bitcoin block. So if they're doing that, and right now we're neutral and prices are pretty stagnant, actually, I believe we're down. I know we're around 26,800 days, somewhere around there. We, we know that these people, these entities, these investors, they put a lot of funds into it. And not, not only that, it's not just the Bitcoin miners that see it, because I think they have the same narrative that, that I have, maybe you have as well as the four-year cycles, things will start to really increase once we get to the Bitcoin halving next April, May, 2024. But it wasn't just that. This is the, the piece of the article that I found most interesting. Not just the hash rate, was this. Shares of crypto mining company Marathon Digital on NASDAQ have climbed 10% since closing on Friday. Since Friday. That's a rise of 187.9% for the year. Let me say that again. That's a roughly 188% rise for the entire year for just this one stock, Bitcoin miner Riot platforms. Shares have also jumped 10% since Friday, roughly, a 256% rise since the beginning of this year. So it's not just the, Bit the Bitcoin mining operations, Mara and Riot and everything else that's out there, but it's also investors who see what's going on and go, you know what? We're gonna put our money where our mouth is. We think the narrative is still intact. We think things are gonna happen. And that's a lot of funds going in a certain direction for the Bitcoin price not to move because it's not about what's happening right now. It's what is happening in the future. And I got to tell you, when I read this, I got a little excited because I'm like, holy smokes, I've been investing in Mara for, for quite some time on Robinhood, dollar cost averaging, that one, Coinbase, Amazon, Tesla, and uh, Meta, and some, a couple other ones. So I saw this, I'm like, you know what? Not a bad time to be investing when it's boring and nobody else wants to. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Also, this article came out 
And of course, my knee-jerk reaction is, man, America's screwing up left and right. But there's a little bit more to it. So crypto exchange Gemini to soon operate in the United Arab Emirates or UAE. And this was just a quote from the blog post. This is from uh, Gemini itself. They say, by applying for a license, we'll be taking another step towards making Gemini a truly global company. And of course, when I hear this, I'm like, you know, Gary Gensler, if he just stopped protecting us so hard, they wouldn't have to branch out to, the, to these uh, uh, global markets and, and become this, the, this huge thing. And they could just, you know, centralize here in America. But you have to remember that. <laughs> Gemini is all over the place. Gemini, Gemini is available in over 60 plus countries, not just the U.S. I know sometimes I get a little bit myopic and I look just at, at, at the U.S., but Bahamas, Canada, I don't know if they're still in Canada, honestly. Dominican Republic, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, and so on and so forth. But when I take a look at this, I'm like, you know, it's not just them. It's Coinbase and everything else. So I think even if we have problems here in America, and we talk about that in uh, NFA Live, uh, even if we have a problem here, I think we're in good hands globally. That, I think, is a good thing and a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, there's some things that might bring us back. The macro. Uh, this was just released today. Unemployment level, unfortunately, this is from Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. I'm telling you, great, great uh, charts, everything you want to know as far as macro and crypto and equities. There's a link in the description, 10% off the first month. But we can see here that you know, unemployment level uh has went 5.84 million to 5.66 million so that was from month over month from march to april unfortunately uh which means that the unemployment rate obviously is going down and that is not what the fed wants to see we went from 3.5 percent in march to 3.4 percent so the unemployment rate is dropping not going up like it wanted to and what does that mean that means that we will probably see a rate hike but there's a dichotomy of opinion here this is the fed watch tool i'm going to link this in, in in the description the current target rate is 500 to 525 that's the 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 rate right right now that we have for the fed so the target rate probabilities for the 14th of june it states here again very odd it says 78% means that they're going to stick it or stay at the 500 to 525 range. Only 21% of the markets believe that they will raise to 525 and 550, even after this. This to me makes no sense. This is not what they're trying to do. I, I think the CPI number is still very sticky. I'm pretty sure that when we take a look at the different problems that are going on as far as like the macro and the uh, inflation rates, I don't think that uh, they've done enough. I don't think they've felt enough, but that's what we have uh, right here. However, this, this is from Jim Bianco, uh, from Jim Bianco Research. And he says, this was just today. Uh, the Fed's fund and future is perfect for predicting the FOMC inside 10 trading days, which is today because we don't trade on the weekends. So from now until the 14th of June, 10 trading days. The exception is if a major bank firm fails, throwing the entire financial system into chaos a few days before the FOMC meeting, which is 14th of June. But he states, if no major banks fail between now and June 14th, the Fed will hike 25 points. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, that's the exact opposite of what this part has. So I would think that they would do a rate hike, but maybe I'm just seeing some things wrong. Let me know what you think about that, where I've uh, misinterpreted that, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. This is not a set it and forget it. I'm telling you this every day. If you're not going to subscribe to me, subscribe to somebody that you can get your information from and just stay up to date. That's it. So thanks so much. I do appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.